Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning, wrapping up a, a good and challenging week here on the show. And we appreciate your viewership. Let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard, and his hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. High today, 65, low 57. Water temperature is about 60.6. It's been steady the last four days. So we're, uh, we're right there about where it should be this time of year. Looking at the riverines brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. As you know, it is high. The actual reading this morning, and I press go to 22.4 at Bluntstown. And we talked about yesterday where the rain's coming from and the uh, watersheds up there are just dumping into the system. The Chautauqua Caribbean is high, but it's dropping out a little bit now. It's, it's at 12.5 this morning, and it's going to start dropping out, but guess what's coming this weekend? And tonight, <laughs> we're, we're going to have, have some rain coming, so it's going to, it's going to be high. It's going to be too, a challenge. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at uh, today is February the 16th, great tide today, tomorrow, on into all of next week. So we're looking at the actual low tide at 155 this morning, high tide at 219 p.m. And the river reading is always brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. Let's take a look now at the wind direction. It's going to come in out of the south, southeast at 5. Not much wind today. Our fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. Let's look at them now. We're looking at 428 to 628 this morning. And this evening, 455 to 655. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We're set up on some pictures, uh, all kind of exciting things. I, I do want to go and tell you that next, uh, our guest next Monday, uh, <laughs> our guest next Monday is going to be a very interesting person that all of y'all know about, and it's going to be actually a, uh, Lee Sullivan is coming on Panhandle Outdoors, and you're going to really enjoy him. And we will be, I've been trying to get him to come on for a while, and Lee Sullivan is a true legend. And he was going to tell some of his stories and all what made, what made, uh, what made him famous. I'm having a lot of technical difficulties. This, this week has been, honestly, the most challenging week we've ever had on Panhandle Outdoors. My, my uh, stuff's just flat out not working, okay? see uh, and that's that's what happens on it I had it all set up and uh, anyway here we go let's uh, see okay Jeff let's let's look at some of these pictures uh, we're going to look let's start right at all this all set up here we go now, let's find some a good picture all right here we go this even on high water this uh, this was not this was a couple days ago a, a seven pound East River uh, Right there, the East River, Chautauqua fishing, that is fine. That's a nice one. You can catch fish on high water. Terry G, Terry Gieski, a coach, while kayaking on my creek yesterday, I came across this moccasin sunbathing. I didn't have my gun with me, so I rubbed some sunblock on him. <laughs> sun, sun perfection, protection 30. Terry at Blue Water. Here we go. Look at that. Is that not? Do you, this is so prevalent along the river system, and it's off to Hatchie. This is down off the Apalachicola River system, and folks, they're they're out there now. We don't have need to wait. Uh, they're going to be out there all the time, but they're going to start being a lot more frequent as spring is coming on. Terry, that's a good picture out there. A good action shot, and I'm glad you put some uh, sun sun tan lotion on him. Moving along, uh, out of Carabelle, uh, Justin Link, he fished Tuesday, Friday, you know, last week, caught some nice fish. My youngest daughter got the first red grouper, first keeper. Check it out. Look at that, look at that big smile on the face. And they caught some fish last week at Carabelle. That red grouper's good. A, look at that nice mess of fish. It looks chilly. Uh, this is interesting. Why are barns red? I never thought about this. They said that farmers painted their barns with linseed, linseed oil to help seal the wood and keep it from rotting. So rust was mixed with 
the oil to keep the fungi and moss from growing, and this turned the oil red. And that's what, that's what it happened, that oil protecting. Again, at Carabelle, we're talking about catching sheephead. Uh, this, this guy, uh, Joe, started fishing at 3.30 and fished till 5, just an hour and a half. Caught him right there in the Carabelle River. Nice mess of fish. Uh, Mexico Beach Artificial Reef Association, how you can help them. You know, you fish the tournament, become a member, support our business, uh, make a donation, and uh, be a sponsor. But this is coming up around the corner. This is interesting. The top bass teams updated. This is updated last week. But look at the first, let's look at the first five teams. Three out of those five, they're from the state of Alabama, Montevallo. Uh, then third is North Alabama up in Florence, and fifth is Auburn, who is always up there, and uh, they're, they're a good job there. Okay. Okay. Ted and Andrew Garnier. Winston, I enjoyed today's show with Dalton and Bill. I've been following the Biophilia Center for a number of years, and I've been impressed with their mission. Also, thankful for your current efforts in Tallahassee. Thank you, Ted. I pass that on to Bill. This is interesting. Anna Prevost posted this. It's a yellow cardinal seen in Florida. It says a one in a million. This is down around Gainesville. And of course, there are a lot of bird watchers down there. And uh, they were able to find it. I, I've never seen one and very rare. So thank you, Anna, for letting us know about that. This is Mexico Beach. What a, what a great shot. This is after five years ago. After Hurricane Michael, is that not incredible how it was wiped out, literally wiped out? The phrase wiped out is used here. And then look at it today, how it's built back. <laughs> and there's a comparison right there. That's something. Okay. Uh, and here's, I wanted to show this. This is Billy Bryant. Billy and my son Chip were best friends growing up. They fished together a bunch. And Billy lived there there in down around Tampa now, but Billy had his love for fishing, and he made his first cast of the year down there. He caught that nice one. So, Billy, I'm proud of you. I'm glad to see you still fishing. Now. For some reason, I'm not surprised. I knew you would be, uh, you'd always be fishing and all. So, anyway, I've got to set up these pictures. I have so many pictures to set up. Uh, uh, let me go to uh, to my phone a minute because I, I wanted to share some pictures. So what I got to do when I'm, I'm on the pictures here, then I'm going to go some of the pictures here on the phone. I've got to switch it over. So, uh, okay, so here we go. So, hold on a second. Bill Roxby sent some. And here we go. I'm going to show, okay, they're showing up, Jeff? Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and show these. Okay, here's just some, I have several pictures of different books from 11 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This is right here in daytime. Look at these pictures. Uh, I said, and you know, this is recent. I said, they do look like, that, like they're in rut. Uh, this is over here in South Walter. Look at there. Great pictures. They've been chasing all afternoon. And uh, well, look at, I'm going to go about this big one here. And this is basically why they do with the tail tucked in like that. And, okay. Bill, thank you so much for sharing those. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Now, Rusty Russell sent this uh, picture. This is, this is really good. We're going to talk about it. Here, here it is right here. Uh, Coach, this, this is Mr. Morrell. He is my son-in-law's grandfather. He's 100 years old. Today, he fishes whenever he wants. He still plants a large garden and welcomes anyone in his community. He lives down in Lake City, but he's going to be watching this on YouTube. He invites anyone to come down and, and look at it. So let's, I'm going to go to this uh, video. Folks, this is, here he is right here. A hundred years old. And look at this. This is happy hundred birthday. To look at there. Can, I, I just, it's about a minute long, but it's worth it. Look at there. Don't we all wish we can do this when we get to be 100? <laughs> I loved it. He's real and strong. He's got that open face spinning rod. Okay, I'll turn it upside down. I'm going to leave it alone. Let's let it run, okay? Uh, he's still, still spinning. He's got a nice fish. Good calm water. <laughs> 
This is what we're talking about and telling everybody to stay active, keep doing things, keep moving. He's got a, he's got a back brace on. He's got, he's got a rod holder there. It's smart to keep sitting down because it's hard, it's hard to keep it balanced. I love it. Two people, I love to see kids catch fish. I love to see old people catch fish. That's why I tell you, you know, take a kid fishing. Also take some older people fishing when you get a chance. All right, here we go. Okay. He got it in. All right. Good job, Mr. Colter Bears. Happy 100th birthday to you down there in Lake City. And uh, we, we admire you for staying that active and, and, uh, and, and doing things like you're doing. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to my iPad. And, uh, and uh, they have, I also have some, uh, Ken Paramore sent a great picture to me. I, I, Ken, I'm going to show this one next week on the show. I, I just, I've got so much going on today, I can't get everything switched back and forth. I did, uh, J.B. Hillard sent me some information on, let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is right here, basically. A whistleblower, this is over in South Walton. A whistleblower complained on stormwater runoff pollution and its impact on public health. Obviously, uh, this Santa Rosa Beach, uh, Chocotachee Bay is getting polluted by stormwater runoff. Uh, this guy has had two friends. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, that's his opinion. He works from South, Southwest uh, Florida. Okay, right, I want to read this right here. I'm a resident of Santa Rosa Beach. Uh, last year, two of my good friends had to undergo amputations to save their lives after swimming in the Choctahatchee Bay. This was due to flesh-eating bacterial infections that are rapidly increasing in our bay, a direct result of mismanaged stormwater runoff. He has a petition going, Doug Lyles, and uh, JB wanted to share that with us. And this is, uh, this is serious. Uh, we know we've had it off and on for a long time, but it's gotten worse lately. Uh, people have lost their lives. We have young people lose their lives. Uh, we've had all different people lose their lives. So uh, it's not a, a rampant going on, but a, a few of them is enough. So be aware of that. If you want to sign that petition, uh, Let's see, uh, let's see, he, he's sending it to, anyway, Doug Lyles at Santa Rosa Beach. And J.B. Hiller, thanks for, for uh, sending that to us and, and getting that uh, done. I want to talk a minute before we get into our drawing. I'll talk a minute about the boat ramps. And y'all, if you know me and watch the show for a while, you know that's one of my uh, pet peeves is people charging people charging us for boat ramps. It should be done. And we talked about, you know, those boat ramps are built with taxpayers' money, outdoors on license, boat, uh, boat registration that built with our, okay. And now when they charge us, to me, that's double taxation, which is unconstitutional. You can't get taxed twice for the same thing. So that's my, and I wish somebody would pick that up. But anyway, while well, I brought this back up, Mexico Beach has gone up on their boat ramp. They've gone up from $20 to $25, and they're all tickled about it. It's not, a, it's not funny, and, and, what, and it's, it's uh, Appalachia's doing it now, and St. Joe's doing it, but Mexico Beach is, and you know who it hurts? It hurts the middle-class American outdoors person, like all of us that watch the show. Okay, and that's who it hurts. I wrote down some notes last night. Uh, this is, I, I got fired up about this. It's state, it's state money. Uh, you can, if you need help, uh, I, I, what I want to know is all this money they get, does it go back to the boat ramps? I guarantee you 100% of it don't, but we pay 100% of it. Uh, the, it's bill tax money. Okay, I, I just talked about all this. It's just on America. I wrote down it's on American. I'm very proud of our Bay County Commissioners. For, uh, the, for not doing something like this. I've talked to each and every one of them. Folks, we have to be involved in politics. And here's how the politicians, you have elected officials and you have politicians. Uh, okay, and, and we'll talk about that. But what, here's what happens. The politicians, they'll, what they'll do, they'll let people in the community get in free and then they charge everybody else. And so that, then they get elected again. That don't make it right. It, it really doesn't. And then St. Joe has done that. And, 
uh, it's, it's just not right to charge people for, for boat ramps. I, I, I just, uh, I wish, uh, I, I, if I get time, if and when I get time, I'm going to get the breakdown of how much money each one of these communities get for their boat ramps. Uh, the oil spill money, there was tons of money out there to build boat ramps. I promise you, all we had to do was just write, you know, you, you had to take, you had to write the grant as a community to let's get this boat ramp fixed up and, and it helped out here. Uh, Snug Harbor in Panama City, right downtown Panama City, beautiful boat ramp. Do they charge? No, everybody goes in there. Look how beautiful that, we saw the video last week. Uh, area Gulf Coast, go out here and launch the Gulf Coast, free. And, it's, and people, and then I think I saw one of the commissioners said, uh, well, the rest snapper, you get closer to the rest snapper and save gas. Uh, well, you can, you can launch free there at Davis Beach. You can launch free at Indian Pass. And the smart fishermen are doing that. So it, it's just not right. And I, I don't like to complain on the show, but uh, enough about that. <laughs> and uh, and you know, I'll ever change my mind. And, and we're right. I talk to so many people out there. And I'd like see where that money goes if it goes back to the boat ramp. It's just double taxation on American. Let's go back to something positive. Let's give somebody some free seafood. How about a $20 gift certificate of Tarpon Dock Seafood? How about Katie Cumby from Fountain? And go pick out some and cook it up this weekend in that rain. All right, Big Red Snapper is going to, from Macon, Georgia, Tristan Westbrook. Uh, Tristan, touch base with me. Let me know when you're gonna be in town and, and I'll call, call Clay and let him know about it. Okay, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, folks. This is uh, <laughs> this week. Listen, the camera's not working. One of the cameras not working. Uh, just gonna be switching back and forth. I left my fishing report at home, and I, I had Gail send it to me, and I, I thought I copied it, but uh, I don't. I don't think I have it. Okay, so I left my Friday fishing forecast at home. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and I thought I had that, Jeff. I thought she texted it to you. She did. Let me go. Let me go back to my text. Okay, hold on. I have it right here. Okay, this. Uh, I love doing television shows. Okay, here we go. I, I this I got my report right here. So here we go. What I wrote down, and for some bad, bad weather. I can't sit over here on the stool because of technical difficulties. So I hope you've enjoyed this week as much as I have. Bad weather. We got the rain coming, high water. But here, here's what's biting. I just showed the picture. The sheep head bite has been really good. And those are coming out of the Carabelle River. Let's see if we can find the Carabelle River again. Okay. Bring it in here. It's a little bit out of focus. And even Google has been, uh, has been a bit out of focus right there. But anyway, the, up the river, it's, it's coming on in. The sheephead fishing is going to be really strong. Uh, okay. I want to let's talk about surf fishing a minute. Wendy's sort of been my go to person uh, down. She, they're living at the Cape while they're building a house down at the Cape. And, uh, they're building a house in St. Joe, but she every morning gives me a report of the surf condition. It's been rough early part of the week, and she likes it rough because she can, she can find really pretty shells after the rough, and she sent some, they find some pretty shells. But I said, honey, I want to know about the fishing. So she walked around uh, down at State Park and then up a different uh, stump hole. The fishermen, there's a few fishermen, and guess what they're catching? Whiting. Uh, she talked to a guy, he'd come down from Tallahassee, was fishing at the state park, had a nice mess of whiting. So uh, it's like I've said last week, the whiting bite in the surf is strong. And it has calmed down. Uh, this morning it has calmed down. And uh, so she's up. Uh, it should be calm for the weekend. All right, moving on to what else I wrote. Uh, sea quarters, uh, I talked to them early part of the week. Overall, it's cold. In fact, the fishing is cold. In the early part of the week, they, only one, one commercial guy went out early part of the week, which is unusual out of Carabelle. But the red grouper bite is still strong. Uh, near shore, the flounder bite has been pretty strong. A group got in some flounder, but most of them were too small to keep, which is interesting. This time of year, you expect them to be small. Uh, the best bet, sheephead, crappie. You saw the video yesterday. February crappie bite is always strong. Where to go? Uh, if, of course, if you have a boat, you want to go to Lake Talquin, uh, Lake... Lake Jackson, Lake Seminole, uh, over here, uh, uh, Lake Wimico now, not for crappie, but Lake Wimico should be really good and, and calm 
if, if the rain should be in, Wimico is going to be good. Bridge fishing, uh, this time of year, bridge fishing is good. I haven't seen many people, I keep a, a, toll, a, a, a count on the Lynn Haven Bridge. It's been slow, uh, so I, I don't think they're biting much on the Lynn Haven Bridge this week. It's been pretty slow. It's going to pick up. The great thing about bridge fishing, you can stay warm and, and move around and get some food and all and go back to the car and, and the bathroom is usually close by. So bridge fishing is always good. I also wrote down pond fishing, freshwater ponds. Uh, they're, they're really good this time of year because as it warms up a little bit, those fish are coming out. Remember, the, remember those crappie though, Jerry was talking yesterday in a video about, you know, that they're, they're in deep water. We're like in 27, 25, 27 foot water uh, catching some of those crappies. So uh, if all the electronics you have, you can tell sort of where they are as far as actually uh, as far as actually in the water, they don't, they're not, they're not bottom feeders and they're not, they're going to be up here. They're going to be suspended at different levels according to what on the side there. Catfishing, uh, you know, the water's going to be high and all the feeder creeks, everything's going to be high. Catfishing is going to be challenging, but next week when things start going down, that water starts coming out of all those feeder creeks and all, catfishing should really be good this time of year. And uh, I saw some, somebody sent some pictures, forget who it was, caught some nice catfish. Uh, so Terry, keep us posted on the feed creeks there. J.B. Hillard, keep him posted on the Choctahatchee River. If I was going to fish this weekend, I'd uh, go to Cape San Blas and I would surf fish. I'd get up there in the morning uh, and, and just surf fish. Uh, fish bites, a little, little bit of uh, shrimp. St. George Island, the state part down there is good. Uh, when they were telling me that the St. Joe State Park is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. They've had some wonderful sunsets and not a lot of people know about it, so don't tell everybody about it. So uh, you can get out there and uh, do some really good fishing all along that area. Uh, Crooked Island Sound is going to be in good shape. If you can get right there at Davis Beach, uh, put your boat in there. Flounder will be up in there. And also the, uh, the redfish buy has been steady. Our guides are making good trips again. Uh, when the weather permits, around the bridges, there are people catching nice redfish, kids are catching these big old redfish. We've got spring break coming up soon. Some of these schools are coming in, and, and more and more of these spring breakers are taking little inshore trips and just having a, having a ball catching the redfish and different things like that. So uh, all kind of good things still going on. A uh, bit of ground is going to keep us posted on, on what's going on up there on Lake Seminole. We'll be talking to him some next week. I'm going to have to wrap it up. It's been a been an exciting week. Don't forget Monday, we're going to have Lee Sullivan come on, and this, he's got a, he's an amazing guy, really, the things he's been through, from Vietnam to uh, Panama City Beach Police Chief, and now Granddad, and doing out, outdoor stuff with his grandkids. We appreciate the viewership this week. Uh, Y'all keep us posted on what you're doing, and let's enjoy the great outdoors. Let's take care of the outdoors and do something good for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.